Close your eyes. Take a couple of good, long, deep in and out breaths. And wherever you feel the sensation of breathing in the body, focus your attention there. And just stay right there. All the way in for the in-breath, all the way out for the out-breath, and in the spaces in between. And ask yourself if long breathing is comfortable. If it is, keep it up. If not, you can change. Make the breath shorter, more shallow, faster, slower, heavier, lighter. Experiment to see what kind of breathing feels good right now. Breathing is something we do all the time. We don't think there's a right way or a wrong way of breathing. But there are skillful and unskillful ways of breathing. You can breathe in a way that aggravates anger, in a way that aggravates fear, or you can breathe in a way that counteracts those emotions. It's good to be sensitive to what you're doing. The Buddha calls this bodily fabrication, which means there's an element of intention in there. We usually let it go on automatic pilot, but there's some part of the mind that's monitoring that when it comes in, when it goes out. But it's monitoring work usually is done without any supervision, so you, oftentimes you wind up breathing in ways that are harmful to you. So here's a good chance to get in touch with your breath and see what's good for the body, good for the mind. It makes you more and more sensitive to what you're doing. This is the whole purpose of the Buddha's teachings. He says you're acting in ways that are causing suffering, but you could be acting in ways to put an end to suffering. So why cause suffering? Change your ways. In order to change your ways, it's important to see when you've been doing something wrong, so you can correct yourself. If you don't admit that you've been doing wrong, then it's hard to learn. Today is the last day of the rains retreat. It's the day of the Bawadana. The word Bawadana literally means invitation. In this case, the monks invite one another. We've been living together for three months. We've gotten to know one another's behavior. And if someone has committed an offense and he hasn't confessed it, and you've talked to him about it, and he refuses to talk about it. The Mawadana is the day when everybody has to talk. Everybody has to be open to criticism. This is a good time for that. As I said, we've been together for three months. We know one another's behavior. If someone is making an accusation, we know the accuser, we know the accused. And if there's any controversy that comes from bringing up an accusation, well, tomorrow we can leave. So now's a good time to air things out if they have to be aired out. And if nothing has to be aired out, then it's a sign that we've lived together and we can guarantee one another's behavior. When monks leave a monastery, back in the old days, you'd find a monk out in the forest. You had no idea whether he was a good monk or a bad monk, but if he could claim that he'd been in a monastery for the three months and had gone through the Bawadana without any problem, that was a sign that he'd, his behavior was acceptable to his fellow monks. And the important thing about all this is that you have to have at least some time every year where you're open to criticism. Actually, the Buddha says it's good to be open to criticism at all, at all times. He says people who point out your faults, you should regard them as people who are pointing out treasure to you, because you're able to see sometimes the faults that you didn't even know about. And being open about your faults with other people means that you're also going to be open about them with yourself. And that's how you can learn. The Buddha himself learned that way. He didn't start out perfect. He started out with a lot of imperfections, a lot of misunderstandings, but he was able to act on what he thought was best. And if it wasn't good enough, he tried to find something even better. He was always willing to make corrections to his behavior, always willing to see his mistakes, admit his mistakes, and then learn from them. That was how he grew in the Dharma. So you have to remember, when you're learning the Dharma, it's not a matter of learning what's in the books. You're learning about your own behavior. Because as I said, the Buddha's main teaching, the Four Noble Truths, is teaching you what you're doing is causing suffering. He's pointing out where what you're doing is causing suffering and how you can change. If you could admit, yes, I do behave in those wrong ways, that's a major step in getting your behavior right. As the Buddha said, when you see your own foolishness, to that extent you're wise. So always be open to criticism. And then, if someone is wrong in their criticism, well, you've learned something about them. If they're right, well, you've learned something about you. Either way, you've learned. And it's through learning like this that we grow, that we learn how to be better and better in our behavior so that we cause less and less suffering for ourselves and for the people around us.